Hey, it's Dr. Taylor. I want to help you get into medical school by sharing what worked for me. But first, why should you listen to me of all people about this topic? I'm a resident anesthesiologist at Massachusetts General Hospital, a Harvard teaching hospital in Boston. I graduated from Yale with a BA in political science and earned my medical degree from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, where I was inducted into the AOA National Medical Honor Society. So I've been through the process and had the opportunity to go to great schools. In this video, I'll talk to you about what worked for me. And my hope is that you'll hear some strategies that resonate with you and that will make you successful when you apply to medical school. Let me tell you about my application process. I was a political science major at Yale where I focused on bioethics. My political science classes that I chose covered medical ethics, which is what initially sparked my interest in medicine. I also became interested in sleep medicine. It's a really long story. And started doing clinical research at the Yale Sleep Center. I've realized over time that what medical schools want is to see applicants that have a sustained, deep interest in something. This does not have to be a topic related to medicine. They want to see that you're able to identify what makes you tick and that you're able to commit to it for the long term. Examples include music, dance, sports, a social cause, research, writing. For me, I was really interested in bioethics, Indonesian language, and sleep medicine. Also, volunteering in service was something that was part of my college experience long before I decided to apply to medical school. I chose service projects that I thought I could contribute to and that were meaningful to me and did not try to choose something that would look impressive or shouted, I want to be a doctor. I volunteered as a crisis counselor for Milford Rape Crisis Center, which was an incredible experience and a real privilege. I was involved in my local church, and I worked with the Community Foundation of Greater New Haven, a nonprofit in the city, on a fund focusing on improving the lives of women and girls in the community. Don't volunteer because medical school application committees want you to. Do it out of the spirit of service and in a way that is meaningful and long lasting. I wanted to make commitments to these groups over years, not just one-off visits. Now, I decided that I wanted to go to medical school fairly late in the game, end of my junior year of college, and I hadn't taken any pre-med courses by that point. This meant that I needed to take my pre-med classes after graduation from college. So during my senior year, I applied to post back pre-med programs and chose Bryn Mawr as a one-year program to complete my requirements. I loved Bryn Mawr. It was a 14-month program covering biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and biochemistry. I did well in the program, which really opened up options for where I could attend medical school. By the way, let me know in the comment section below if you wanna hear about study techniques that worked for me in my pre-med classes, and we can definitely cover that in a future video. Now, because the application cycle takes a year, post -bac students generally have to take a gap year between the post -bac program and medical school. I ended up taking two years because I was still interested in sleep research and was thinking about doing a combined MD PhD program I worked as a clinical research assistant at a sleep lab at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, and I loved the experience. I also met my husband there, which was a perk. Now, it's important to be thoughtful about how you pick a research lab. I made sure to pick one whose PI, or principal investigator, included research assistants on publications. I checked this by looking at the lab's website and by searching for my PI's papers on PubMed and looking through the author list. I took my MCAT during the first year of my research gap years. I did well in the exam, which again gave me more options for schools. I'll share my standardized exam study tips with you in an upcoming video, so stay tuned. I also gave careful thought to my personal statement. I took inspiration from the personal statement that I used for college, actually. Because my life was more than just pre-med classes, I wanted medical schools to know my whole person, and see what else gave me joy. I think it's really, really important to move beyond that classic start with a patient vignette model of a personal statement. Medical schools see these all the time. Try something new. For me, I started with a paragraph about how my dad and I used to go to diners, 
eat pancakes and work on math problems when I was a little girl. I was able to talk about my love of math and the importance of family in my life. Yes, I did tie this to medicine in the next paragraph, but I really wanted readers to see that I had more to offer than just my grades or one patient interaction. I was actually told in multiple medical school interviews that my personal statement stood out to many reviewers because it was different. I wish I had done a better job being selective about where I applied to schools. I didn't seek out someone to give me objective feedback on how competitive my application was. By the time I was in the second year of my research gap years, I had no idea how to go about the medical school application process, and I didn't have mentors who could guide me on the path. I was afraid that no schools would be interested in me. Really a completely unfounded belief looking back when I now consider the strength of my application at the time. But because I had no one with medical school experience to review my application and give me objective feedback, I just assumed that everyone else applying had these insane credentials that I didn't have. You know, PhDs, master's degrees, first author publications in JAMA, you name it. I didn't recognize at the time that I had a compelling story to share and that schools would find it interesting. I applied to way too many schools. And once I got my first interview offer from a competitive school that I wanted to go to, I realized I hadn't targeted the right places for me and my interests from the beginning. Looking back, I also wish I hadn't compared myself to others during the application process. I wish I had stayed away from forums in particular. Remember, you are interested in medicine because you are bright, curious, growth-minded, hardworking, and genuinely you want to help people. Tell yourself this throughout the application process to keep your spirits up. It's so easy to get bogged down in comparisons to your peers. But remember, you don't know their whole story. You have unique gifts to offer a medical school and more importantly, to patients. And that's what you need to convey in your application. I'll cover the nitty gritty about these topics in more detail in future videos. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Also, I'd be so grateful if you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.